Hello and welcome to Dartmouth Memorial Stadium here in the town of Dartmouth as Dartmouth Community Media presents Dartmouth High School football. It should be a good one today as the Dartmouth Indians play host to the Brockton Boxers in a Southeastern Conference battle. Paul Santos alongside Ian Abreu today. What a beautiful day for football. Close to 50 degrees. Sun is shining. Game rescheduled from the Friday night. And I'll tell you with the weather today, it is absolutely sensational here at the stadium. Limited crowd, just two per player. And they're up here in the stands and on the visitor side, one adult per player. Right now, I'm going to turn it over to the PA announcer, John Noons, as it is Senior Day here at Dartmouth High School with the football team. Francesca Viella, escorted by her mother Carolyn and father Frank. We will now introduce our graduating football student athletes in numerical order, accompanied by their parents. Number 15, Landon Soares, accompanied by his father, Stephen. Number 17, Owen Quigley Mello, accompanied by his mother, Lisa. Number 58, Jared Holmes, accompanied by his father, Jason, and grandfather Ronald. Number 67, Cole Perry, accompanied by his parents, Cheryl and Jeff. And number 79, Liam Barlow, accompanied by his parents, Mary Ellen and Roy. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time, effort, commitment, and pride you've placed into your athletic endeavor careers, and we wish you the best of luck with all future endeavors. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, a nice round of applause for our seven seniors from our 2021 graduating class. to Dartmouth Memorial Stadium here in Dartmouth. ECTV Sports proud to present Dartmouth High School football today, a Southeastern Mass Conference battle between the Dartmouth Indians and the Brockton Boxers alongside Ian Abreu. I am Paul Santos. Welcome in. What a beautiful day for football. 
And judging by last week's games, it should be a great game. Dartmouth beating New Bedford 20-14. Brockton beating Durfee 28-21. So we get two 1-0 teams going at it here this afternoon. First place on the line in the conference. Well, first of all, Paul, happy spring. Good yeah. to see you and happy spring to all of our viewers. And Feels listeners. like spring. It certainly does. It felt like spring last week, too. It was 60 degrees at kickoff, and things look beautiful here today. Not a cloud in the sky. And you're correct, Paul. Offensively, the Indians were paced by the first-year starting quarterback. We talked about him a lot last week. I reckon we'll talk a lot about him again today. That senior, Will Kelly. Will completed four passes for 147 yards and a touchdown. He also rushed for 88 yards. But he was not to be outdone, of course. Junior running back Ethan Marks played fantastic as well. He not only had two touchdowns, he had 11 carries for 42 yards, and they paced the Indians just past the Whalers by the final score of 20-14. to 14. And as Paul mentioned, they have a formidable opponent here today in the Brockton Boxers. Again, the Boxers coming off that 28-21 to 21 victory over the Durfee Hilltoppers last week. A couple of key players to look at for the Boxers. They're led by senior quarterback Devontae Medley as well as senior wide receiver Navon Reed. They both delivered clutch performances against the Hilltoppers last week. Medley completed 15 passes for 295 yards and three touchdowns, and he connected with Reed for six catches and 112 yards and a touchdown. Paul, those are the two players to key in on if you're Dartmouth. And if you're looking at the game from the Dartmouth point of view, you have to be happy with this junior class, the way they performed last week against New Bedford. In fact, let's take a look at some of the highlights from last week. Dartmouth with a nice win over New Bedford right here at the stadium. And it all started out with Will Kelly early in the game. And a lot of people were talking about, you know, that deep pass when he rolled to his left and got the ball down the field to Baron Dutra, 27-yard gain, and you knew this guy was in for business here. And that was pure Ben Roethlisberger, and a few plays later, that set up the 16-yard touchdown bolt by Ethan Marks to put the Indians on top six to nothing. The Indians' defense was solid, and he kept the New Bedford offense out of the end zone. The only time they got in is when Beloy Souza blocked it, and then his brother Billy Souza went in for the score. That's the only time New Bedford got in the end zone. And not to be outdone, the Indians counterpunched right away with a 67-yard touchdown connection between Kelly and Baron Ducha to put the home team up 12 to seven. And how about that 53-yard pass by Will Kelly to Patrick Crane this time. Almost went into the end zone for a touchdown. Look at this, all the way down to the enemy three. Another tremendous pass completion by the quarterback and by the receiver. And analogous as to the first Dartmouth touchdown, we saw the same sort of scenario play out here again. That set up an Ethan Marks touchdown as he just broke the plane as you see here with the outstretched reach. Wow, he just made it to give the Indians a 20 to seven lead. And then the Indians got the two-point conversion. After that, there was a nice 43-yard pass by New Bedford quarterback Dozenberg to Frazier. New Bedford was kind of on its last gas there as they tried to get back into the game. And New Bedford really came on with the late last gasp here as Dozenberg, you see here, looking for a pass, looking for help. He says, nope, I'll take it myself. Whoop, right into the end zone, a five-yard to make it 20-14. to the only thing left on the table, of course, was the onside kick, but that was recovered easily by Patrick Crane, and Dartmouth went on to the 20-14 to win. So good, solid game all the way around. And to talk about Will Kelly, he only passed four completions, four complete passes for 147 yards, but he made it count. And as you said before, he also rushed for 88. He can rush, he can throw, he really is the complete package. We were very curious to see how he would do in his first varsity start coming up from junior varsity, and he did not disappoint. And as you mentioned, Paul, earlier at our Open, today is senior day. It sort of feels like a collegiate football game here today. It's a Saturday afternoon, noon. The weather is fantastic. I'm looking forward to a great game here today between two of the better teams in the Southeast Conference. Had a chance to talk to both head coaches before the game. Peter Colombo at the helm in Brockton. Rick White at the helm here in Dartmouth. Both of them Super Bowl winning coaches. Peter Colombo with two championships. 
right after he took over in 03 and 05, then in made three more appearances to the Super Bowl. And the interesting thing there, people know about Colombo. Obviously, he took over for his father, Armin Colombo, and Peter took over in 2003. So he's been here for 17 years. And when you put it together, 53 years that there has been a Colombo as the head coach of Brockton. What a tradition. He's been around a long time. You remember him if you're a Whaler fan growing up as you see the Indians coming onto the field here. As a New Bedford High Whaler fans, the name Colombo sort of kind of makes you have some angst because the Colombo name, whenever it would come into Walsh Field, you knew that you would be in for quite a contest. His teams are always well-led, very athletic, tough, gritty, that's the Brockton boxer away, and the Indians are certainly in for it today. Should be a good game. The Indians are physical themselves. Uh, they give up a little bit of size to Brockton, but obviously Dartmouth will try to counter with their depth and their athleticism. The scribes that follow local high school football are looking for a very close game today. One of the things that I think kind of stands out to you is that Durfee came within one touchdown of being right there with the Brockton, only losing 28-21. And speaking to Peter Colombo, the coach of Brockton, he says that Durfee was much better this year than they usually are. So you got to credit Durfee for giving Brockton a run for it there. And, of course, Dartmouth with a good win over New Bedford. So Larry low standard times, he's predicting a one-point Dartmouth win. Well, you got to go with the home team, right? Because uh, we are a hometown broadcast station. We are a hometown newspaper in her case. And we're going to go with the home team here. We'll see what happens. It's going to be very interesting. Obviously, that first score is going to be so vital. You want to set the tone, set the tone early, put up a quick six, make the statement here and early that you are the dominant team in the Southeast Conference. You have to assume whoever wins this game today really sets themselves up for a great position for first place seed and a potential, obviously, a potential and foregone conclusion of a postseason berth down the stretch here. So, But you, can, you can't think about what's going to happen three, four weeks from now. You have to obviously worry about the task at hand, and we now have the national anthem. from the opening kickoff here at Dartmouth Memorial Stadium. Ian Abreu and Paul Santos along with you for the ride. Beautiful day for football, and we're glad to have so many folks along the South Coast and really around the area, even down Florida, wherever you are from the area, tuning in today. We're very happy to provide this service to promote these student athletes. Just a moment ago on the field there representing Dartmouth was Cole Perry for the coin toss. You might have seen number one, Devontae Medley. Dartmouth won the toss, elected to receive, and Devontae Medley, that's a name you're going to hear a lot about. 295 yards in passing, 15 passes last week, and he ran for another 88. What a weapon that senior quarterback is. He certainly is. He can also run the ball. I like what Rick White's doing here. Normally that Bill Belichickian approach of if you win the toss, you would defer and try to get the ball to start off the second half. Rick White, as I mentioned in the open, he wants to set a message. He wants to set the tone here and now. He wants to put up the first points of this game and get these boxers on their heels. So we'll see what happens here under center. 
Center under the leadership of Will Kelly. And with the play-by-play -play action, he is my partner, Paul Santos. All right, thank you very much, Ian Abreu, all set for the opening kickoff here today between Brockton and Dartmouth. Back deep, Ethan Fernandes along with Sal Esterlin. And it is collected here at about the 15-yard line by the Indians and a pretty good special teams tackle immediately. I believe that was number 22, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it was actually Malik Miranda, number 32. 32. Yep. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Miranda was all over. Marks white on rice. Barely gets it across the 25-yard line. Great coverage by the boxers as the ball is spotted at the 27, and that's where the Indians are going to set up shop here. And let's see what the game plan is. We saw a, lot, a good mix, an eclectic mix of ground and pound and throw. We saw some nice bubble screens. And now we have a full house backfield here for Dartmouth. So Will Kelly brings him out. Big game last week against New Bedford. And Kelly is back to throw immediately. He's on the run. He's very good at throwing on the run. And he has a man. It's Crane. Crane down to the enemy. 47-yard line. That's a gain of about 30 yards. First play from scrimmage, and the Indians execute perfectly. And we can see here, Kelly does his check down, sees that his first option's not open, and he looks. He waits the play action fake, rolls to the outside. Now he sees that Crane's one-on-one, -on -one. and when it's one-on-one, -on -one, you loft that baby up all day long. He beats Demetrius Cicada for the huge first down. Great first play gain. Inside handoff, no, it's a fake handoff to Ethan Marks, and there goes Kelly down the sideline to the 20, pushed out of bounds at the 15-yard line, a 30-yard gain for the junior quarterback, Will Kelly. The Indians have the boxer defense on the run right now with that play action. They bit on the play action on the first play to the hook up to Crane. They bit on the keeper on the play action here by Kelly as he scampers down the sideline for another over 20 yard gain. The ball placed on the 17, another huge first down for the home team. Will Kelly in enemy territory. Inside handoff, there goes Marks. Marks spinning his way past the 10. Tackled at about the five yard line. And that is gonna be close to a first down. It is gonna be a first down. First and goal for the green. Yeah, it'll be a first down, a 12 yard gain for Marks. And wow. three yeah. plays in a row. Wow, you know, and again, the Broxer defense, they don't know what to do because they don't know if there's gonna be another play action. They're playing back now on their heels. And now they pound it up the middle to Marks. Crane, Eshelin, and Marks in the backfield. And it's going to be Kelly. Kelly turns the corner. Kelly is in for a touchdown. A six yard touchdown run and in four plays, the Indians are on pay dirt. Kelly on the keeper, fake the handoff to Marks. He swings it to the outside. He gets some excellent blocking by his receivers and his line. Look at all these shift to the strong side. They all knew the play at hand. And Will Kelly, that wasn't a mistake. That was drawn up. Kelly takes it himself on the keeper, a six yard touchdown scamper. And the Indians lead six to nothing. So the Indians kicking the extra point. And that one goes right down Broadway. And that's Oliver Taradash. So 9.46 to go. Very quickly, the Dartmouth Indians have really taken it to Brockton. I mean, I expected the Indians to, you know, come out, play well, execute well like they did last week, but to go all the way down the field on four plays like that and executing perfectly, I mean, I... I have to say, very impressive. You had a 20-yard connection between Kelly and Pat Crane right up along the near side here for a gain of over 20 yards up to the midfield stripe. And then right off to that, Will Kelly keeps it himself on his own play action, fake the handoff to Marks. He cut to the outside, brought the ball again to the strong side, all the way up along the Indian sideline for another 20-plus yard gain. Then on the very next play, Ethan Marks bulldozes his way up the gut for 12 yards and on the very next play Will Kelly six yards out scampers it in on the bubble unbelievable first possession for the Indians you talk about making a statement and making a statement hard and early let's see what Devontae Medley cooks up here on the boxer first possession Graham White kicking off now for the Dartmouth Indians Malachi Johnson and Noah Aluwu back deep for Brockton 
And this is carried by Johnson into pretty good territory, not into Dharma territory, but down to about the 40-yard line. It's pretty close to a 20-yard return, so good field position for Brockton. They really needed that on special teams to try to, you know, get some good field position, so on their first possession they might be able to do something. Malachi Johnson was just bouncing off Indian defenders, being so athletic they couldn't get him down, and he brings the ball into pretty good territory here for the boxers at their own 42-yard line. We get our first look at the senior quarterback, Devontae Medley. He had 15 passes last week, very successful, can run like he's doing there, can also pass the ball, but he is going nowhere as he is tackled immediately by Baron Dutra for the Dartmouth Indians. Dutra, the outside linebacker, was all over it. He read that play action fake. He was all over it like white on rice. Medley had nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. He just hit the deck, a gain of nothing. It's second and ten. How about Brockton here? Four wideouts on the second and ten this time for quarterback Medley. Medley throws it, gets tipped at the line of scrimmage. Looked like Crane, Patrick Crane got in there on the quarterback. And he really disrupted that play. 100% on the strong side blitz by Patrick Crane. Let's take a look right now. They weren't ready for it. Crane comes from the outside, the outside linebacker, blitzing right in, and the pass was deflected. The boxers were actually lucky that deflection wasn't picked off by an Indian. It's now third and long for Brockton, and an obvious passing down here. I would assume the boxers will spread them out. You know, they got a lot of weapons that they can go to through here, like Sean Lopes and Jason Wanondu, and they can definitely move the ball down the field through the air. Let's see what Medley does. Steps up in the pocket. Now he sees a space, tries to run for the first down, and in the second effort, he gets very close to the first down marker. Got hit a couple of times by the Indian defensive backs. But it's all going to come down to a spot of the ball right here. The wide receiver, Cameron Montero, number 17 on the near side here, making the wave, saying it is the first down. And a very generous spot for Brockton. They give him the first down. The naked eye appeared to me they were about a half yard shy as they were just brought down as Medley with a nice little scamper. He had nothing doing. He had no one open. Kept it himself. The boxers get the luck of the Irish, and they get the first down. A huge first down, because the last thing you'd want to see is a three and out if you're Coach Colombo. Now they move the chains. Devontae Medley, the senior quarterback. It's an inside handoff and a huge run by Jamal jones Rays. That's in excess of 10 yards, so on successive plays, the Brockton offense has first downs, and now we're in a hurry up. With split backs, and they have two dynamic backs who can run and catch the ball. Keep an eye on Navon Reed. He's one of the big weapons out there in the wide receiver position, but it's going to be Jamal jones Rays, number 24 again with the carry, this time inside. A gain of about four that time for the boxers. And this is an example of how well coached the boxers are and how athletic and talented they are. They're in the hurry up here. Second down and about six for Medley. Medley's got time this time. Gets it away, deep down the field it goes, it's caught! And is it a touchdown? Yes it is! Navon Reed comes through with the reception just behind the defensive back. And we talked last week about Will Kelly threading the needle with some beautiful passes right in the <laughs> belly. This Boy. time he did it. Paul, I think we are in for a barn wow. burner today, my friend. That is a 31-yard hookup between Medley and Reed, and that's, again, one-on-one -on -one coverage. The coverage was there. You've got to give credit to Landon Soares. He was with Reed step for step, but the arc was just too much to overcome. What a pass by the senior, Devontae Medley, hooking up with another senior, Navon Reed. Huge block. Wow, the Dartmouth Green blocks the extra point attempt. How about that? We saw that twice last week on the Indian side. Zachary Santos could not get that through the uprights. And so it's seven to six. And let's take a look and see who down there on the line made the block. Kind of tough to see where we are. It looks like that was actually Will Kelly. I saw number 12 Kelly cutting around the outside edge and he was clapping right away when it was blocked. It may have been him. Did you say there was a 38-yard touchdown pass? 31. 31, all right. Let me make sure I can read my own writing over here. <laughs> so how about that? Kelly 
Nice pass, then a touchdown run of six yards, then a couple of minutes later, 31-yard touchdown pass to Reed. Oh, this is this is going to be fun. Brockton kicking it off. Collected here at about the 18, and we have a whistle. I don't know why we have a dead ball here. Usually you don't on a kickoff. I don't, oh, there is a flag that could be offsides against Brockton, and it will be offsides against Brockton. They... They breached the neutral zone a little too early there. So they'll be pushed back five yards. The Indians, skill position players really making themselves known here. Back deep on the kick will be Baron Dutra, Ethan Marks, and Sal Esterlin. He had a great game last week too. And kicking off will be Noah Ulawu. So here we go, second possession of the game for the Dartmouth Indians. Collected here at the 21 by Ethan Marks. Marks gets to about the 33, about a 14 yard return for Marks. So both offenses have been starting with good field position, good special teams play so far. And again, similar to what we saw in the first kickoff by Brockton, it's Malachi Johnson again on the wrap-up. He's so quick going on down that far side of the field by the far hash. And now, let's see what type of adjustments Coach Colombo has come up with here for his Brockton defense. We know that they're not going to take that first drive lightly. They're a competitive team. They're a good team. I look for them to send a message here on this drive. First and 10, Kelly hands the ball off. This is Esterlin turning the corner at the 36-yard line or so. Got hit kind of late and you there. Can, yeah, you can make the case, Rodrigo Lima, Lima. A little bit late on the hit, the near side bench here for Dartmouth, trying to make the proverbial throw the flag signal with their hands. Nothing doing. Gain of four yards, but again, the Brockton boxers may have gotten away with a 15-yard penalty against them there, and... We have a full house backfield now for Kelly, mixing it up. Two wide outs, looks like we have an offside potentially, although we'll have to see if the officials saw anything. No, it is gonna be an offside against Brockton. That'll be a five yard penalty, and will give the Indians a very nice second and short. That's gonna be against Devon Miller, number 65. You gotta give credit to Will Kelly. That hard snap count, he was really trying to get that Brockton defense to commit, he did and the Indians get a free five yards here, and as you just mentioned, it's now a very makeable second and one. Marks, Esterlin, and Crane in the backfield with Kelly on this second down and one. Really a great opportunity for the offense to dial something up here. Play action, Kelly dumps it off. Oh, wide open was the intended receiver, but the ball was slightly overthrown. He was looking for Esterlin on that play, and. It was a screen, it was a fake me out, I'm gonna try to run the ball. When you do that and you backpedal, you get the linebackers and defensive line to commit and they come to you. And the hope is that you buy just enough time for your running back to create that bubble on the outside into the flat. Unfortunately, it was just over the head of Estelin. If he was able to come down with that, that would have been at least a 15, 20 yard gain. He was wide open. Third and one, inside handoff. Ethan Marks, and I believe he did get the first down at the Dartmouth 41 yard at the Dartmouth 44 yard line. And it wasn't the first effort; it was that second effort at the end, just pushing aside his first tackler. That was Noah Moore, number 78, the strong side defensive end, and he pushed the tackler back and he got the first down. The Indians now hurrying up a little bit on the first and ten. Will Kelly. He keeps this time. Some pretty good blocking, but no, Brockton powering their way down. And it looks like Zachary Santos, one of the tacklers there for Brockton, as there was nothing doing there. Only one yard gain that time. The linebacker, Jeffrey Prophet, was there as well, number 45. And that's the kind of message Coach Colombo wants to send. We know the Brockton teams can always whack and smack with the best of them. And that was a hard bring down. And that's a message sent right there that, hey, look, you're not going to run the ball at will on us all day here. Even though your name is Will, you're not going to run and pass at will on us. Chow and Dutra wide to the left on this second down and nine. And here's Kelly. 
Kelly gets it off. It is collected at about the 47 yard line, so that's a minimal gain. Collected by number eight, is that? Crane. Crane, yeah, there he is, number eight, Peter Crane with the reception. That was a low pass. He got down under the ball to get that one. And unfortunately, this isn't the NFL. If it was, Pat could have corralled the ball, gotten up, and maybe scampered for another three or four yards. But high school, youth, and collegiate football, where you land is where you'll stay. It's only a gain of two. Third and seven for Dartmouth. Will Kelly, the junior quarterback. He's got time. He lets it rip. And it is incomplete. They're looking for a penalty. And the intended receiver that time was number 13, Baron Dutra. Dutra wants pretty good coverage there, too. Dutra wants the call against Gershon Safant, the linebacker, going back in coverage. He wants the pass interference. To me, Paul, that was just great coverage if we get another look at that. But that's just Safant going back on his man here, getting his arms up and making the block. Let's take a look here. I mean, there was contact, but it was at the exact same time the ball was coming in, so now the Indians will have to punt. They're not. They're faking it. There's Kelly. Now he decides to kick it away. Interesting call. The ball bounces out of bounds at the enemy 21-yard line. It looked like he was looking downfield and didn't see what he wanted to see, so he ended up punting the ball away. And that was a safe call by Rick White. I think the call was, hey, look, try for the fake, roll to the outside. If you see something, it's gravy, huck it up. But if you don't, pooch it away. And they did. I guarantee you if the ball was within their own territory, they wouldn't have dialed that up. But considering the fact the ball was at midfield, take a shot. Why not? It didn't work out, but it's not all too bad because the ball is pooched down into the Brockton territory at their own 21-yard line. Yeah, I really like that call because the way they drew it up and the way they executed it, it really wasn't a high risk. It had a low risk. It all came down to Kelly reading it. So there's a man in motion. There's a flag on the play, so a dead ball foul. We'll see which way this one goes. It's going to be a procedure penalty against Brock, and that'll set up a first and 15. It's going to be against Matthew Olivar. Olivar, number 73, was just a little too anxious. I think he was anticipating perhaps a blitz because it looked as though to me that the Indians were locked and loaded and ready to bring the house as you had a couple of inside linebackers ready to rock and roll. And I think he was just a little too anxious and he was starting to get his positioning and he was obviously flagged for the uh, illegal procedure. Uh, Joshua Miller for the Indians was really the one who I would credit for getting that penalty drawn. Lopes and Reed are the far wide outs. Devontae Medley, a senior quarterback, and you can tell he's comfortable back there. He has time. No, not this time. He is going to be sacked down at the five-yard line. Great penetration by the Dartmouth Indians. And Patrick Crane is in there on the sack. Crane is another one of those dual role athletes for the Indians we talked about last week. He's doing it as a receiver, and he's doing it as an outside linebacker again. A blitz off the strong side. Medley didn't see it coming. Similar to what he saw Crane do last possession with that blitz from the strong side when he blocked the pass. He's doing it now with the blitz, and he sacked him. Huge loss. It's now third and 23, and... The Indians are in great possession here to really do something. Medley plays it safe. It's an inside handoff, bouncing off the line and carrying a few extra yards is Noah Alowu. But the Dartmouth defense will have none of that. Crane in there again along with some of the other down linemen like number 18, William Chow. And as I was just saying, the Indians now have a tremendous opportunity within their possession because with that stoppage, we knew that the Boxers were going to be knocked back quite a while. And with third and long, you knew that obviously there's not going to be anything too crazy dialed up here. It's third and 20. They're going to want to play conservatively. They don't want to risk throwing up a pass and creating something foolish. But as I say that, they have three wideouts to the far right. So uh, we'll see what happens here. I, I can't see them getting too crazy. Third and 20. There's Medley. Out to the flat it goes, and a nice run after the catch by Noah Alowu, but he's not going to be 
anywhere near a first down. Gain of about six or seven. So great defense here by the Green. They did it to New Bedford, and so far they've done it to Brockton except for that one play. It's a gain of nine. It's fourth and 11, and... I believe Brockton's going to punt. They have to, right? I mean, <laughs> I mean, okay, here, they're going back now. Looked as though at first a little bit of a, a wishbone here. I said there's no way they're going to go for it, and now you finally see Gershon Serfan back to punt. Actually, it's Darren Castor, excuse me. Castor positioned at about his five-yard line, a high snap. He gets it away end over end, takes a favorable bounce past the 50, but it's going to die at the 48-yard line. Another opportunity here for the Dartmouth offense with tremendous field position with three minutes to go in the quarter. Dartmouth has a tremendous opportunity here to take back that momentum. Hopefully, if you're an Indian fan, because of the likes of Crane and others, that tremendously uh, momentous defensive stand there and all of the momentum that they had. And, and we're going to have a timeout here for the water break, but uh, again, with all the energy and bringing the heat and the sack by Crane on Medley and all of the great coverage they had, you're going to hope that that will springboard them to a great possession here offensively and get them ready to roll. It's only a 7-6 to six game here, so you're only up by a point. Now you have a chance to really strengthen your lead. Nice look at the fans here on the home side. The Dartmouth cheerleaders out there rooting on the Dartmouth Indians. Beautiful sunny day on this Saturday afternoon at Dartmouth Memorial Stadium. And as Ian mentioned, the water timeout. They have the two-minute water timeout right in the middle of each quarter. Well, it's supposed to be in the middle of the quarter. They're doing this one at the three-minute mark of the quarter. And all timeouts are two minutes for each team when they do call their timeout. So a couple of changes in the rules during the COVID-19 time. And Dartmouth hanging on to that 7-6 to six lead. The six-yard touchdown run by quarterback Kelly and that 31-yard touchdown pass from quarterback Medley to Reed. And what a good one we have going here today between the Indians and the boxers. And I did want to mention, too, in the Southeast Conference that they have here, the top two teams play off at the end for the, you know, the league championship. So the Indians, if they win this game today, they'll be in the driver's seat. Yeah, and, and just like I was saying during the Open, you're 100% right, Paul. If the Indians, whomever wins this game, obviously – uh, as the hometown broadcasters, we hope that it's the home team that wins this game. But whatever happens, whomever comes out of here with 2-0, and you've got yourself in that driver's seat to get that first place seat and host potentially the league conference championship in four weeks. Here's the handoff by Kelly. Ball is carried past the 50-yard line. Nice tackle that time by number seven, Gershwin Suffant who comes up and makes a pretty good hit after a gain of five. And Esterlin is lucky because Safant came from behind him, popped him and popped him hard, and Esterlin didn't see it coming. That had fumble written all over it, but you got to give Esterlin credit for keeping the ball under the arm, having a strong grip, and not having loose fingers. Esterlin rushing for 37 yards last week in that game against New Bedford. He's in motion again, but we're going to have a penalty right here. At the line, it is going against Dartmouth for a procedure penalty. That's going to be a five-yard penalty against the Indians. Yeah, an illegal shift against the Indians. They'll be knocked back five yards there. A little too much gumption on that play. As you see, they were going to have a perhaps a either a screen play or a play action. You saw the play action with Estelin running across the backfield. That's a huge blow. Five yards already, and now is it as if that first run meant nothing. So now you got to dial it up. Second and ten, Esterlin in motion. Fake handoff. Kelly tries to sneak up the middle, but nothing really doing that time as he is tackled by one of the bigger, beefier guys on the Brockton line, Naziah Amor. And the reason why Amor was able to get him was because it was all started by Noah Moore. Noah Moore breached the near side of the field here the defensive end he was able to get Estelin around the ankles that slowed him down and then the mess was cleaned up after that only a gain of a yard second and nine now for the Indians Kelly keeps this time tries to spin away nothing doing he is driven to the turf by Noah Moore one of the bigger down linemen for this Brockton team yeah, Noah Moore is not playing around today, folks. We saw it in the last possession 
We saw a nice tackle then. We saw a great tackle here on Estelin, and we see it again now here in the defensive backfield for the loss of yardage, a loss of five yards. It's fourth and 14, and the Indians again are forced to punt. Will Kelly doing the punting duties. Malachi Johnson back deep for the Brockton Boxers. The punt is at the 30-yard line. Once again, he does the roll right and pooch kick. Bounces down to the 30-yard line. One thing it does, it keeps it out of the hands of Malachi Johnson. Ball goes out of bounds at about the 25-yard line where the Brockton Boxers will take over. It's really a win-win. You can't lose. You roll out. If you see something there, you throw it. If not, you pooch it, and to your point, you get it away from their dangerous kick returner. It was interesting because I think this time it looked like he had his mind made up but he was going to kick it. The last time it looked like he was really yeah. thinking about throwing it. Yeah, he was getting ready. So let's see what the boxers can do here. First and 10, ball is spotted at about their own 25-yard line. The field position not as good as the last time they got the ball, but they have some weapons that can give you big chunks of yardage. In fact, in speaking to Coach Rick White before the game, he talked about defending the big play. Don't let Medley make the big play. Well, they already have one so far. Medley fakes and runs it up the middle. Medley bobbing and weaving down to about the 34-yard line, a gain of approximately eight yards. And we get to see Medley's elusiveness that time. And you got to give credit to that offensive line of the boxers, led by Naziah Armour. Naziah Armour just pushing the Indians to the side, and as big and as strong as Josh Miller is, he couldn't compete on that one. He was just pushed to the side, and that may be the last play of this first quarter here. We'll see. Speaking to Coach White before the game, he said, hey, you know, look at those guys over there. There's some guys with a lot of beef. And he goes, and these aren't guys 5'9 with beef. These guys are 6'3 with beef. So they definitely have some, some uh, you know, weighty, strong guys up front like they usually do. Inside handoff. This is going to be the last play of the quarter. And getting driven to the turf that time was Alawu, but he does have enough to get the first down as the first quarter comes to a conclusion. And Brockton just hurried that up to get that last playoff for that first down. I thought they were going to let the clock run and reset, but they wanted to start off the fresh quarter with a fresh set of downs. Can't blame them. So after one quarter of play at 7-6, to six, the Indians maintaining a slim lead. Paul, I thought we were going to have a shootout here, and we still may, but after the first two possessions, things have kind of calmed down. Yeah, the defenses have stepped up a little bit, perhaps some adjustments made, and I think, too, a couple of penalties by... You know, the offense, like you say, you have a, a first and ten, and then, then you get to a second and three, but then it turns into a second and seven, and then all of a sudden there's a sack, and then the next thing you know, you're out. You're three and out that particular time. So the defenses have definitely stepped it up, but I'm impressed by, by the offenses. I'm impressed by the skill position players, and I still think you're going to have quite a bit of points up on the board before all is said and done. Well, these offenses are just too good to be stymied, whether it's Will Kelly and company or Devon Medley and company. And you've got to remember, on the Brockton side, we have still yet to see Navon Reed really get mobilized. Here's a guy who caught for 89 yards last week, and he had 112 yards receiving and a touchdown. He knows what he's doing out there. He's a heck of an athlete. We haven't seen him engaged yet. It's going to be interesting to see how... The adjustments are made, and <laughs> Rick White knows what he's doing. He knows what he has in front of him. He knows that with Brockton, you have a strong, big, athletic team. You have a heck of a quarterback who can not only run the ball, but he can sling it. We've seen it uh, you know, in the past, last year. We've seen it in the opening day victory over Durfee. We've seen it in the first quarter. Devont Medley is the real deal. We'll see what the Dartmouth High Indians can do here because right now we have a fresh set of downs for the visiting team. First and 10 for Brockton. They're at their own 41-yard line. Here's Devontae Medley with the inside handoff. Nice gain up the middle by number four, Rodrigo Lima. And the Indians coming up inside to stymie the run with only a gain of about four yards. And that's the thing about Brockton. Here's the thing with a guy like Rodrigo Lima. You don't talk about him at the open, but he just comes right in and he plugs right in and he makes a play. Good first down yardage, five-yard gain. Lopes and Reed are the wideouts for Brockton on the second down and five. Senior quarterback Medley throwing for 295 yards last week, 15 passes against the Durfee Hilltoppers in that 
Very close win. Very close win. They did force three turnovers against Durfee that helped him. And it's an inside. No, it's a keep by the quarterback, and he gets the first down. Gain of about seven for Devontae Medley, and the thing that sold that play was a very effective play fake. Absolutely. That faked all of us up here. That faked the Dartmouth High defense. Look at this handoff, or lack thereof, the fake. Look, he's going to give the ball to Jameel Barnes. We all thought he had it, and Barnes did not have it, and he kept it himself and went up the middle. I'm glad to see the cameraman got faked out, too. That, we you all know, got it made me out. feel that I wasn't alone. Not you know? alone. <laughs> First down and 10 for Brockton. They are in enemy territory. And Reed goes wide to the right. Devontae Medley, a senior quarterback. You can tell an upperclassman quarterback as Montero goes in motion. It's a fumble. Montero picks it up. He's in the backfield, and he's going to be thrown for a big loss. Oh, he had so much trouble picking up the ball. And the Dartmouth Indians got in there and just threw him to the turf. And that's what good teams and good players do. You make your opponents suffer and penalize themselves for their mistakes. And it was just a botched handoff, as having the ball for Brockton was Cameron Montero. Just couldn't gain a handle, and he's brought down in the backfield by Esterlin. Man, that was a nice job there by Dartmouth just pouncing on Brockton's mistakes and Coach White said before the game mistakes turnovers I mean we hear it all the time but you know you make some mistakes and it's the game sometimes now we have a flag at the line of scrimmage another dead ball foul we've seen a lot of this so far early in the game we are we're going to get a false start again this time against Brockton oh wait a minute now we have Brockton pointing to the Indian side Navon Reed no it's going to be a false start kind of surprised to see these kind of mistakes, I know it's difficult because we're in the world of COVID-19, the practices are limited and so forth, but usually, I know it's only the second game of the season, but usually, you know, things start to get a little bit tighter when you get to the second game. What's interesting, we didn't see these kinds of penalties last week between Dartmouth and New Bedford. It's gonna now be second and a mile, second and 24. You combine that nine yard loss, plus this penalty here, that's huge, and you have two downs here if you're a Brockton. Do you concede this drive now? The ball's at your own 39. Do you try for a pass play, see if you get a big gain? Or do you just play conservative and see what happens? They got to throw. Lopes and Reed out there. And it goes to Lopes at the 41-yard line. Lopes barreling forward past the 50 into Dartmouth Indian territory. Almost gets back to the original line of scrimmage, so that... That erased a good chunk of the yardage that they lost before. And that's going to be a gain of 13 yards. Nothing too crazy here. A screen pass. But what makes the play, again, was great bro Brockton block, blocking by Brockton as Michael Curry, number 13, led the blocking there. And now it's third and a little more makeable. It's third and 12. Senior quarterback Medley looking to make a play. Nice pass, wide open, and a nice reception by Michael Curry, the tight end, the senior. And let's see where this ball is placed. It's very close to where the first down marker is. It looks like it's going to be fourth and maybe one. And Curry led the way with the blocking there. Now he was wide open on some soft coverage in the secondary by Dartmouth. He was wide open. It's fourth and one. So what does Medley do? Does he... Shoot forward for the first down. No, it's going to be a timeout taken by Rick White on the Dartmouth Indian side. He wants to talk to his team, talk to his defense that played so well last week against New Bedford and try to take away the possibility of the Brockton first down. Well, if you're Brockton, you obviously want to get it away from Patrick Crane on the outside. You also want to get it away from Joshua Miller on the inside. So how do you handle it? Well, you see where Miller and Crane are lined up. If it's the strong side, you want to counter go to the left or go to the right, depending on wherever they're going to be lined up. Do you try for that play action fake that we know that Medley can run so well and he fakes us all out with? Or do they try for a little dump pass? It's going to be uh, a, an interesting call here because Peter Colombo does have a wide array of options here on fourth, and it's really less than one. It's about a half a yard. Um, and what's interesting, though, regardless of the fact it's less than a yard, you've got a shotgun situation here. Now he's going Now up. he's going under, yes. That's the right call. you got to wonder if he's going to do this. 
He didn't I, get it. I don't think he got it. I think Dartmouth knew that he was going to try the old Tom Brady play, and they closed up the interior. See, going under center was the right call to make because you don't want to obviously be in the shotgun on fourth and inches, and it is a turnover on downs. And obviously you concede three additional yards. He goes on to center, but he doesn't try a play action or a handoff up the middle to one of his beefier backs. He tries for the sneak, and the Indians snuffed it out, and they knew it was coming. Looks like Patrick Crane was one of the players in there that just got right in the face of Devontae Medley, and you see Dartmouth celebrating because they knew they made a great play right there. And plays like that oftentimes become momentum swingers if your offense gets on the field right after, and... That could happen right here. So first and 10 for Dartmouth at their own 38. It's to Marks, and Marks is going to throw the ball, and it's incomplete. Oh, the old halfback option, the pitch and pass, and unfortunately the ball was slightly overthrown because it looks like it could have been a big, big gainer there for the Indians. That was a great call dialed up by Rick White. Faked everybody out. They had one-on-one -on -one coverage on the far side. And Landon Soares was all alone. The throw was just a little overthrown by Ethan Marks. Marks had Soares. Soares was all alone streaking. He would have hit pay dirt on that one. Really liked that call even though it didn't work. And here's Kelly. He's got some real estate in front of him at the 45. Down at the 50-yard line. Tackle that time by Malachi Johnson. But move the chains as the junior quarterback keeps it and takes advantage of that space around the left. And Will gets the credit for the yardage in the first down, and rightfully so. But I got to tell you, he does not get there without Landon Soares on the block on the near side, paving the way. That's a wide receiver right there, getting dirty, getting mucky, getting into the mud, doing the unsexy things to win a football game. First and 10 for Dartmouth, here's Esterlin. Esterlin turns the corner, he's got 10. He's got 15 down to the enemy 45 yard line. And another first down on successive plays by the Dartmouth Indians. Go weak side on one run, go strong side on the other. Keep ping ponging back and forth. That way Brockton does not get a glimpse of any type of patterns. Keep them on their toes. Now it's Estelin on the other side. You had Kelly on the strong side on one, and you've got now the other case where you have the weak side on the other. Estelin actually going backwards about three or four yards before turning the corner and really utilizing his speed. And that's Ethan Marks past the 30, down to about the 27. Pound and ground that time as Ethan Marks getting some dirty yards to the inside. And that's what Ethan Marks does well. That up the gut, nothing too classy about it. It's just hard nose football. Get your helmet down, pound it in, and score six points. Get those dirty yards, get those first downs. You've got players like Estelin who do the nice bubble things and go on the outside and they can juke. Ethan Marks, you know what he is. He gets the dirty yardage, but man, that's so important. There's Kelly, handoff to Ethan Marks. Nice push by that offensive line, and that's gonna be another first down for Dartmouth. That line made up of Miller, Pickering, Holmes, Perry, and Souza doing that dirty work up front. And that's the thing, Ethan Marks gets behind that front five, and he's a downfield runner. He's not an east to west, west to east runner. He's a north to south, south to north runner. The feet are always moving. He's never stopping to look for that open because he's a freight train. He just keeps going and going and going, gets another first down for Dartmouth, and they're cruising. Indians mixing up the formations as Kelly drops back. He throws, and it is going to be incomplete as the ball Bounce down there, the 10 yard line intended for Patrick Crean. And that time, Rockton got a little bit of pressure there on Kelly. Nice coverage by Gershon Serafant, the cornerback on the far side as well. That's probably one if you're Rick White, you tell your quarterback, you know what, throw it away or just try to see if you can find someone to dump it off to on your check down. He tried to force it, I think, to Crane, and he's lucky that it was just an incompletion. Could have been a lot worse. Second down and 10 now for the junior quarterback. He keeps, tries to run around the left side like he did last time, but he is going to be hit pretty hard that time by Darren Castor. And Jose DePina was also there, number 73. The defensive lineman, the 
defensive tackle on the far side. The Third. play didn't work as good as it did the last time they ran it. <laughs> Third and seven. Obviously here you're in four down territory, uh, Paul. Uh, needless to say, this isn't professional football where you've got a, a field goal place kicker who can kick it 40, 50 yards. So we are in four down territory. Third and six. Kelly under pursuit. Kelly throws it away, and that was a good decision. It looked like he was going to be sacked. And we have a flag here on the far side. There may be either a face mask or a late hit. Rodrigo Lima brought him down. He may have grabbed the face mask of Will Kelly as he threw the ball. That would be a huge mistake for Brockton because on that particular play, they had the quarterback, Kelly, running for his life. Personal foul. Oh, it's a horse collar tackle. Wow. Let's take a look. Now, obviously, Will Kelly has nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. You know he has nowhere to throw the ball. Yeah, bringing him down, as I said, was Rodrigo Lima. That's just a knucklehead play. You got to be careful. You knew he had nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. He was already hitting the deck. There was no need to horse collar him down. What a huge break for the Indians. They get 15 yards and a first down. And now, if you're an Indian fan, you hope they make them pay for their mistake. If you're Brockton, you just threw away the last three plays, pretty much. Ethan Marks, pound and ground to the inside. Picks up maybe a couple of yards that time. Got a pretty good thrust on the line, and tackle made there by Darian Caster again for Brockton. And if Dartmouth plays their cards right, they can sort of milk the clock here, not rush it too much, hopefully get a late score to send them into the second half on High Street. Second and goal at the six for the Indians. And now we're getting a timeout. And that's going to be taken down here on the field by Brockton. And now the defense on the Brockton side wants to take a second look. Well, you know, unfortunately, if you're a Brockton Broxer fan, that play by Lima is really a backbreaker. That horse collar tackle, you, you, you got to be smarter than that. Uh, it's one of those situations where um, you got to understand the situation. Uh, it would have brought up a fourth and long potentially for uh, the Indians because you had an impending sack. I know that Kelly did throw the ball away, but regardless, it would have brought up a fourth and seven. And you were cruising defensively. You were bringing up the heat. You were dialing it up. You gave the Indians a free first down and then some. And now they have a great opportunity. They're six yards away from punching it in and gaining a two-score lead here. And how huge would that be for a message to get a two-score lead with the clock starting to wind down here toward the end of the second half? I know that Brockton will get one more possession inevitably here in the second quarter, but they'll have to hurry up and uh, and rush things through, but Dartmouth certainly asserting itself here as a very physical team. We always talk about Brockton being physical, and by all means they are, but Dartmouth, even though they give up some on the size, they're telling everyone here today, we're not to be outdone. We can whack and smack with you too because we know Brockton can. Last week in that game between Brockton and Durfee, Brockton forced three big Durfee turnovers that helped them in that 28 to 21 win and the coach talked to me before the game about that how those forced turnovers were big in the game and coaches always bring that up Rick White talked about it too we can't make mistakes we can't make that knucklehead play we can't make the untimely penalty and Brockton has absolutely done that right here with that horse collar so let's see what the Indians can dial up here second and goal at the six I think when you're down here against Brockton you need to get into the end zone Oh, without a doubt. And without a doubt. You got to go to your man. You got to go to Ethan Marks here. Right up the middle, nothing crazy. Just dial it in. Kelly drops back, tosses over the middle. Oh, it was almost picked off. The ball was floating in the air. And I tell you, number 32, Malik Miranda, was reaching up and trying to bring that in. And I think it was just because you know, Kelly was a little bit on the run. And. You know, he tried to dump it over the middle, yeah. but I think he was forcing it a little bit. And Rodrigo Lima almost had it. You know, not sure about the call. I'm really not. Uh, you, you're, you're backpedaling. You're trying to loft it up. Lima almost had it picked off in the end zone, which would have been a touchback. Run the ball. Do what you do best in the red zone. Get it to your guy. Get it to Ethan Marks. Let him do his thing. Four down territory as Kelly winds out. There is a penalty flag on the play. It's lofted into the end zone, and it is intercepted, but there's another penalty flag. No, wait a minute. They're saying now that 
Number 32, Malik Miranda did not bring it in. Let's we, see what the second flag is. We could have offset in penalties here. I think there was a penalty against Brockton or against the Indians first. Then we had a pass interference in the end zone against Brockton. It could be offsetting. Unfortunate from the Indian point of view because it's going to be a fourth down. And I think, you know, the kicking game is pretty good. You know, you might be able to think about a field goal down there. I don't know if you want to Where they are now, do they that. can do it, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but, you know, I think the ball falls a little bit farther away from the goal post than it was a moment ago. But let's see where the ball ends up. We have to wait for the call. So we have pass interference, right. as we saw. Yep. And we have an illegal procedure against the offense. So they are offsetting, like I said. And we'll just reset. It'll be a third down again. Oh. Okay, we'll check that out later. They're lining up. So third and goal at the seven. And I've said it twice, and Rick White didn't listen to me. Will you give the ball to Ethan Marks this time, please? Well, he's directly behind the quarterback. Well, Kelly keeps on the fake. Turns the corner, and he's going to be hauled down. A minimal gain that time. As coming up with a nice tackle there is Safrant. He faked it to Marks, and Kelly tried on the outside. I do like the call uh, because you obviously were to get the linebackers to bite to think it was your guy. It's fourth and goal, and we're going to stay in four down territory here. They're not going to try for three. They're going to try for six. So this is a gutsy call here, a very, very important play in the game. Does Brockton hold them? Or do the Indians get into the end zone for a touchdown? Fourth and goal. Here's Kelly. Fakes the handoff. Throws to the end zone. It's intercepted. Intercepted by Brockton. Here comes Malik Miranda. Miranda down to the 34-yard line. Big turnover as Brockton comes up with the interception. I think he was looking for Patrick Crane in the corner of the end zone. You got to give credit to Malik Miranda, the outside linebacker, with hands and feet like a cornerback. And you can see him right here going to the outside, steps right in front of Crane in the end zone, takes it all the way out to their own 34-yard line. And Kelly tried to dial up a little bit of magic there in the corner. Unfortunately, on fourth down there, they really weren't going to chance running the ball. They were going to throw it. We all knew it. And Pat Crane's one of your guys. He's an excellent wide receiver, both he and Baron Dutra, uh, both very athletic. Kelly tried to thread the needle, but stepping right in front of him was Malik Miranda out of nowhere. What a heck of a play. And that's a huge shot to the gut for the Indians here. And now Brockton has a chance to score late here in the second quarter. And they have a chance to take that momentum into halftime. 2.47 to go in the half. Here's Medley. Quarterback draw, but I think it was more that he couldn't find a receiver. Tackled by Jared Holmes over the Dartmouth Indians. He still managed to pick up a couple yards. But going back to that last play, you got to have confidence in your quarterback. And we've talked a lot about the passing game, but it was almost like you probably went to it a little bit more than you had to there. I agree. On three downs in a row, they did not give the ball to Ethan Marks. Medley dumps it off on a screen. In the first down territory scampers Noah Alawu. He is a junior and he had a great run after the catch. Excellent catch, excellent dump off into the flat. Looked like it was a check down for Devontae Medley. His first option wasn't open. Great play to make chicken salad. Here's Medley. Oh, he is going to be tripped up, but not knocked down. And now he's finally knocked down. Jared Holmes on the sack for the Dartmouth Indians. He was right in on there. Holmes breaching the A-gap on the left side, coming right through in there and bringing down Medley. Gets him to the ground on the one knee, stumbles him. Yeah, he was down clear as day right there. And that's where they're going to spot the ball. Back inside Brockton territory at their own 49. Second and long with a buck 30 to go. This has been a fun game to watch so far, no question about it. 125 to go, 7-6. The Indians, and here's Medley. Medley keeps on the option. He's thinking about pitching it, but then a second effort gets him back past the original line of scrimmage. 
Should set up about a third down and maybe about seven, so a nice recovery there by Devontae Medley on that second carry. And Peter Colombo not burning any more timeouts, letting the clock run. He really wants to try to punch something in here with little to no time left. 56 seconds and counting, third down and seven. Here's Medley, the senior quarterback. He's gonna go down the field, and it is caught at the 30-yard line. Nice reception by Cameron Montero, and that's gonna be a first down, and they'll stop the clock, and there's gonna be a timeout by Brockton. Cameron Montero, the slot receiver, cutting right in front of the defensive backfield of Dartmouth, getting past that first layer of the defensive line, getting past that second layer of the linebackers, and stepping right in front of the defensive backfield, and he just makes a heck of a catch. And trying to lay the lumber there was the Indians, but not before he was able to get that first down, and that's a huge gain. The ball now spotted on the 30. I gotta like what Peter Colombo's doing here. He's got the horses. These guys are great and athletic, and they can run. Throw the ball. Devontae Medley, we know they can sling it. That's their strength. They can throw the ball, and then once they catch the ball, they're so athletic and they can run. And we're seeing that right here as evidenced, and Brockton is in a great position to take the lead going into halftime. Peter Colombo, the head coach for 17 years now up there at Brockton, the legendary Armin Colombo, was there about 30 years before that. 52 years in a row there has been a Colombo as the head coach. And when Peter Colombo took over, what did he do? He won Super Bowls two out of the next three years, and then they had Super Bowl appearances three more times after that. Meanwhile, on the Dartmouth Indian side, Rick White has won Super Bowls as both a head coach and a player. Not too many people that can say that. So you got a lot of knowledge on both of these sidelines here, and it's been enjoyable to watch. First and 10 now for Brockton. He's going to throw this baby down the field. Does he have Reed? Oh, it's knocked down at the last second. Some tremendous coverage down there in the corner by the Dartmouth Indians. And, hey, that was a nice play there. That's number 15 of the Dartmouth Indians, Landon Soares. Landon Soares had the pick. He really did. He turned around. He just couldn't gain a handle. He turned around at the last minute in front of Navon Reed. Oh, boy, that's one he probably would want to have back. Nonetheless, a great play because the coverage was fantastic against their number one tight end, receiving tight end in Navon Reed. Reed was all alone in the end zone. And you got to give credit to Soares to pick up his man, get that coverage, and knock it down. Of course, he would have wanted to pick six, but knocking it down and preventing a touchdown is good, too. Almost seemed like Medley had his mind made up what he was going to do. This is a second and 10. It's a screen pass, and it's successful. It almost looked like it was going to be a sack, but scampering into enemy territory is Cameron Montero, and that is going to be enough for a Brockton first down. Great execution on the screen with the quarterback in trouble, and it's going to be a hurry up, and it's going to be the clocking of the ball. To stop the clock at 26 seconds to go in the half. And this is a very tricky, dangerous play to run, but if you can pull it off, you're going to get a lot of yardage. And you can see here Medley just going back and back and back, and he gets the line to commit as if and to give up to think as though he's going to get a sack. So everybody comes up, and then out comes out of the backfield, and in this case it's Montero. He's wide open because all the linebackers and defensive linemen are going after the quarterback. They see a Thanksgiving dinner. They want to slam that thing down they're hungry so now here comes Montero do 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 right out in front <laughs> into the flat and he gets an over 20 yard gain big play so I can remember certain teams have favorite plays they like to do that's a play Brockton likes I can remember New Bedford like holding him holding him holding him next thing you know it's a dump over the middle for 20 yards on the screen so it's a play they like here's Medley Medley has plenty of time he throws to the end zone it's caught and it's a touchdown Noah Alowu brings the ball in from 15 yards out, and wow, the Brockton Boxers make the Indians pay for not having scored at the other end of the field. What a great pass by Devontae Medley in the corner of the end zone to Alohu. Gets at least one foot down. All you need in high school and college is one foot. Play action fake. Looks to the middle. Check it down. Go to the right side. Alohu had his man beat in the corner. Caught for the touchdown. 12-7. to seven. They're not going to go for two. They're going to go for one. That one really hurts, I'll tell you. There's the extra point. We have a whistle prior to the kick. 
And if, it's, if, and if it's against Dartmouth, it'll hurt because we had a missed PAT attempt, and it is. That's huge because the point after was missed. It was Zachary Santos missing the extra point, and holding was Jason Wonodi, and they'll get another crack at it. So now do you try for two? They may. They got a little more real estate to deal with. They do, and I do see Devontae Medley back out there. 12 to 7 is the score right now, so this is strategy here because when you get to the end of the game, these points, whether it's one, whether it's two, they can really come back to haunt you if you don't execute. Medley getting the play from Coach Colombo with 18 seconds left. We'll see what they draw up. They are going for the two point conversion. And now they will go for two. Medley is a senior quarterback inside handoff, and it is going to be a successful two point conversion to Rodrigo Lima, the senior running back, and it's a 14 to 7 Brockton lead. Wow, what a tough way to end this first half and second quarter for Dartmouth. You've got the no points on the red zone, the interception. You got the touchdown that Brockton came back and scored with. Then you have the point after touchdown PAT missed by Brockton, but because of the encroachment, and now moves them up half the distance to the goal. And as a result, they slam home the two-pointer, thanks in large part to Rodrigo Lima diving it in. And now it's a full score, seven-point game. How big is that interception by Malik Miranda back at the other end of the field? I mean, this is really a two-score swing because the Indians could have scored there, and that would have been totally different, and they don't score there, and then Brockton comes down the field and they do score. What a, what a big turn of events against the Indians. I guess the good news is that despite all of the mistakes and errors in this last three-plus minutes of the second quarter, it is only a one-score game against one of the best teams in the Southeast Conference. So you can take that into the halftime locker room to say, hey, we didn't bring our best effort and we didn't execute in some ways, but, wow, we're only down by a score here. So that's a good thing to see. If there was just a little bit more time than this, maybe the Indians could do something. But, I don't know, 18 seconds, you don't want to get too crazy. We'll have to see what kind of return we get. Zach Santos will be kicking off. And he kicks it right down the middle. It's collected here at the 32-yard line. It was a line drive kick, but not going to be a big return as there is a tackle immediately right there at the 42-yard line, and on the carry, number 13, and that is Baron Dutra. Well, you don't have much time, but you do have 13 seconds. The ball is in pretty good territory. You're is it enough time, do you think? Well, it depends. Uh, you know, you got to get Patrick Crane out. you got to get him mobilized. you got to get him one-on-one -on, -one on the sideline. We've seen it. Or Baron Dutra. We've seen Dutra and Crane so far this year win those one-on-one -on -one battles up along the sidelines. Give it a shot. Try to get a completion. Get out of bounds. Or or, of course, if you get a first down, the clock would stop anyway. But regardless, whether it's out of bounds or you get the first down, then you have a shot. Looks like they're going to try to throw the ball. Let's see what the strategy is here. 13 seconds left in the half. First and 10, Dartmouth at their own 41-yard line. Here's Kelly rolling to his left. Gets the ball away, and it is incomplete. Intended for number two. Dylan Gomes, number 19 out there, the wide receiver. Coverage that time by Darren Castor. That was very dangerous. Darren Castor could have picked that one off. That's an example of forcing it. You don't want to force it. If it's there, as Rick White, I'm sure, told his quarterback, Will, listen, if it's there, throw it. If it's not there, don't do anything ill-advised. That was pretty difficult. And uh, it's going to be a conservative run here for Dartmouth to, wa to wrap up this half. Yeah, there's only nine seconds left in the half, and they're going to take a it. knee, and that's going to be the end of the half. So kind of an unfortunate turn of events in the last few minutes of that half as the Dartmouth Indians had him on the ropes. Real quick recap. Kelly, a six-yard touchdown run for the Indians. That was answered by Brockton with a 31-yard touchdown pass to Reed. Indians had a chance to get another score. Big interception by Malik Miranda of Brockton. And Brockton came right down the field, and it was a 15-yard touchdown pass medley to Olahu and the two-point conversion by Lemur. And here we are at 14-7. And, you know, you know the old two-score, the Bill Belichick? You let them have yep. the ball and all that? Well, yep. unfortunately, Brockton is getting the ball to start the second half. Yeah, and we know they have a heck of an offense, and... 
If they go up by two scores now, Dartmouth would be in dire straits. The defense is going to have to come out in that third quarter and make a stand and really make a statement. But we know Rick White's one of the best coaches in the area. He'll have the proper adjustments made, and uh, I foresee a very strong played second half here for both teams. Well, it's been interesting to watch, that's for sure. And at the end of the first half, it is Brockton 14 and Dartmouth 7. Glad to have you looking in here along the south coast. Beautiful sunny day at Dartmouth Memorial Stadium. And we'll see what happens in the second half. 14 to 7, Brockton. Ian Abreu and I, Paul Santos, will be back for exciting second half action straight ahead here on Dartmouth Community Media. Back here at Dartmouth Memorial Stadium in Dartmouth. Paul Santos and Ian Abreu along for the ride. Great game here as Brockton leads the Dartmouth Indians 14-7 at the half. You take a look at the Dartmouth Indians and got some stats to look at here, Mr. Abreu. Absolutely, and of course setting the, the pace and the tone for the boxer offense in that first half was the senior quarterback there, Stud Devontae Medley. He was 7 of 9 from the air for 97 yards. He also threw for two touchdown passes as we know, and as we talked about as well and saw in that first half, he can run the ball. He ran for 35 yards. On the Indian side of the ledger, Will Kelly, had eight rushes for 47 yards running, and Ethan Marks had 29 yards running on five rushing attempts. So those were your stat leaders of the first half. Paul, uh, we talked about it as we closed out that first half. This possession here just might be the most important possession of the ball game. If Brockton can score something here, whether it's three, six, seven, eight, whatever they end up doing, and they can take a two-score-plus lead, that can really put a dampen on the Dartmouth high hopes here tonight, or well, this afternoon, I should say, as we get into the afternoon. If Dartmouth can have a stand here and really make a statement, then the momentum, the pendulum swings back to Dartmouth, and now they can try to rebound and try to tie the thing up. But again, it's up to this defense right now for Brockton. Are they going to be, I mean, excuse me, for Dartmouth, are they going to show up? Are they going to be aggressive? Are they going to be really engaged and fired up here? I hope they will be, you know, again, led by the, the beef up front when you talk about players like Josh Miller, the inside linebacker. He has to set that tone up the middle and rumble in, in the middle and create some havoc and we'll see what happens. Here's Paul with the second half action. Thank you, Ian. Graham White, the sophomore, kicking off. And once again, we have a problem back at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, the Indians were too aggressive, too excited. They'll be flagged for five yards. So not a good start to the second half here for the Indians. The Indian special teams, as Ian said, hoping to pin Brockton back here. Big, big, important possession. And as far as that first half, perhaps the play of the half. There are a lot of good plays, but perhaps the play of the half the interception by Malik Miranda as the Indians knocked on the door for their second score, and it really set up Brockton's score back at the other end. So here is the kick by White. Collected here at the 15-yard line by Malachi Johnson. Johnson tackled at the 25-yard line by Dartmouth's Dan Martin. Darren Martin with the nice trip up, and he gets off the turf, and he's fired up, and he's pumping the fist. That's exactly what you wanted to see from Dartmouth here on that very first play. A nice tackle by Danny, and he gets up, and he's pumping the chest. He's pumping the fists. He's getting his defense fired up. Again, the Dartmouth defense has to be dialed up here, led by the inside linebacker, Josh Miller. There's Devante Medley, the senior quarterback. He'll... Dump it off to Reed. 
Reed down to the 40, but thrown down by Ethan Marks right down here in front of us. But still a pretty good gain, though, of about eight yards. And that was textbook tackling by Ethan Marks. He gives up at least probably 40 pounds to Navon Reed in about four inches in height, but he takes him down textbook tackle. Medley on the pass, and it is going to be incomplete. Sean Lopes, the intended receiver. That'll set up a third down, and Brockton moving the ball around a little bit here on their first possession. And this is what's dangerous, and you've got to be worried if you're Dartmouth. Third and two, you know they can run the ball. You know they can run the option. You know Brockton can throw the ball, whether it's Navon Reed on the outside or another one of their talented receivers. Really, sky is the limit here as the ball is placed on the near hash. So when you see the ball in the near hash, which leads me to believe they may try to go to the far side here, the far hash, where they have more real estate. Inside handoff this time and a good push by the offensive line as Rodrigo Lima carries for a first down. He was thrown down to the turf, but not until he was in first down territory. Yeah, and Josh Miller was not happy. He was credited with that tackle, but he knows that essentially that front seven of Dartmouth just got beat. Strong push up front by that Brockton offensive line. You got to give them credit. They've done a fantastic job here for most of this game. First and 10 now for Brockton. Medley keeps this time after the option, but he is tackled in the defensive backfield by the Indians. Wow, they really get some good pursuit by the defensive lineman that time, Ian. And that was Jared Holmes this time for the Indians, the senior defensive lineman. Holmes breaching that line and is only able to hold Holmes to a one-yard gain. But still, you don't see the boxers get negative yardage too often other than we saw a fumble that they had recovered and they lost some yards. And we've seen some penalties, but usually Brockton is a south-to-north, north-to-south team. You hardly ever see them getting pushed back, even right there. A great play by Holmes, but it's still a one-yard gain for Brockton. Very strong. Second and nine. Devontae Medley gets the ball away at the last second, and it is incomplete. Will Kelly had some pretty good coverage on Cameron Montero right in the middle of the field that time. And that's one probably Medley would want back. He was trying to force it. You talk about threading a needle. Trying to find Cameron Montero, but Will Kelly was all over him like white on rice. He's lucky that wasn't picked off. Huge break for the boxers. Great coverage by Will Kelly and the Indians in that backfield. It's third and long now for Brockton, and it's an obvious pass play here. I'm going to look for something on the outside to Avon Reed maybe get one-on-one -on -one coverage. We know what a great athlete he is. Or something up the middle. Perhaps you try another dump off up the middle. Dartmouth's defense last week kept New Bedford's offense out of the end zone. It was only a defensive touchdown for New Bedford. Dartmouth's green will be called upon here against Brockton on the third and long. And you've got one-on-one -on -one coverage here with Avon Reed. Pay attention to that. I mean, we have a late timeout by Brockton. And that's very interesting. That late timeout actually hurt the boxers, believe it or not, because as soon as that ball was snapped and Coach Colombo called the timeout, Navon Reed had been in motion to the slot. He cut to the middle. He was wide open. That would have been an easy-peasy first down for the boxers. And that's a huge break for the Indians because Navon Reed, he was wide open, and he would have been off to the races. One of their... Best skill position players, without a doubt. He scored a big touchdown, the first one for Brockton early in the game, receiving a 31-yard touchdown pass from his senior quarterback, Devontae Medley, as Medley just dropped it in the breadbasket in Brockton's first possession. And then since then, the, defensive, the defenses on both sides of the ball have stepped it up, but that big interception at the very end of that quarter, at the end of the second quarter by Malik Miranda, that's the biggest play of the game so far. Can the Dartmouth T hold them here at third down and nine? Ian said this was the most important possession of the game so far. Could very well be. Here's Medley. Steps up. In pursuit, the Indians. Now he finally throws it away. And it's incomplete. And a late hit and another oh response by Reed as he just... Fires a shot at one of the defensive players. That's Crane. And that's Sean Lopes. Lopes, that, excuse me. That is a Bush League play by Lopes. And back 
on offense. How about the pursuit on Devontae Medley? Let's see what happens here. There's laundry on the field here. So here's the referee talking to his officials to see what the call is going to be. But looking like the quarterback there, Devontae Medley, he was in big pursuit. He had a big pursuit there by the Indians' defensive front. Managed to get it away. It looked like it was almost picked off. And then at the last second, there was an exchange back there between one of the Brockton players and one of the Indian players. Now, here's the pursuit by the Indians. That was number 58 of the Dartmouth Indians getting in there. That was Jared Holmes. And then there's Reed <laughs> giving the shot right after the play. So personal foul. Looks like Coach Rick White is not too happy on the near side of the field. But this is going to create a fourth down and nine, so Brockton is going to punt the ball. So Dartmouth's defense holds. Now they're going to march off the penalty yardage. Ball is going to be placed at about the 34-yard line, so the Indians will get the ball back in what should be decent territory. Back deep for the Dartmouth Indians, Baron Dutra. And Ethan Marks stationed at the 40-yard line. Here's the punt by Brockton. And they get it away. That's Sean Lopes. Collected here at the 35-yard line. It's going to be a fair catch by Ethan Marks. And the Dartmouth Indians take over at first and 10 at the 35-yard line. So here we go, exactly, exactly what Ian was talking about. Ethan was looking for his phone, and I, I had my phone on the table, and I picked Ethan's up. Oh. Sorry about that. Your phone and my phone look exactly alike. <laughs> Sorry about that, I'm my friend. I'm back. I'm back. I'm like, whoa. Were you calling your phone? The phone stopped ringing. It was your phone. I, I, I always do that. I put my phone down and then That's I forget okay. it. That's okay. Peter Chase was trying to call me. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> what's going on here? All right, here comes Ethan Marks on the first and 10. Marks right up the gut. Follows his offensive line. Gains 10 for a first down. So oh, Paul's, a great job by the line. So Paul Santos, the phone snatcher yes. of New Bedford and Dartmouth. I know. I, know. <laughs> I went to reach in my pocket, and I felt two phones there. And I'm like, wait a minute. No wonder you've been scrambling around <laughs> for the last minute. I'm like, what's going on here? Oh. That's how we get our updates from our fans, you know? <laughs> All of our fans saying, hey, say hi to Paul. Say hi to Ian. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> but glad to be back. Sorry I was out the last minute. I uh, had to find my phone. First and 10 now for the Indians. Will Kelly. He fakes the handoff, but he kind of plows into a stone wall. And you see that, that Brockton defensive front, they have been stepping up a little bit. Well, let's see, that's, I believe, Jeff Profet, the linebacker coming up to make the stop for Brockton, second down and eight. And now it's time for Dartmouth to make that message sent. Now it's time for them to cash in on the mistakes of Brockton on that last drive, had that last call against Brockton, the penalty, and then giving the ball back to Dartmouth. Now it's time for the Indians to make them pay for their mistakes, similar to what Brockton did last quarter. Kelly, play action, throws it down the middle, and it is almost intercepted. Oh, man, that was a dangerous pass as Malik Miranda almost at his second interception of the game. Another example of Will Kelly forcing it up. We had double coverage in the uh, defensive backfield, and I'm not sure what he saw here. He just threw it up with a prayer, and boy, that's not going to cut it. I mean, you had Malik Miranda right there, and the Indians are so lucky that Malik was not able to pull it down. Third and eight, and it's time for some real good, hard-nosed, do-what-you-know-best football. Run the ball, run the option, get those nice skinny post, those screen pass, and make it executed. Low snap. Here's Kelly on the run. Throws, and it is caught. No, it Drops. is incomplete. I'm sorry. I thought that he brought it in, but then I saw the Brockton player celebrating as, uh, is that number 22? Yeah, that's, um, yeah, that's uh, Esterlin. 
Marik Miranda was there on the tackle. Estelin had the ball. He had it, but he had a nice backside smack by Miranda that lodged the ball loose, but there is a flag on the play. Yeah, it looked like Miranda made a great catch, and then all well, of a sudden all of the Brockton players were jumping up and down. He did make a great catch. He had it, but again, Malik Miranda was there with a smack, and it lodged it loose, but there is a flag, and both sides seem to be confused on who it's against and what it was. Uh, an eligible man downfield declined. So it'll be a fourth down and eight, and the Indians will be forced to punt on fourth down, and both teams now in the second half with a possession and neither able to move the ball into enemy territory. Yeah, and it's too early for any trickery. They are going to punt the ball. But, of course, you may see that patented Will Kelly swing it to the outside, see if I have some daylight and maybe throw or run the ball. Then I'll pooch it. Malik Johnson back deep for the boxers, but hasn't really been able to get too many touches back there. It is going to be a fake. It's a direct snap. This is Crane. Crane has a first down for the Indians. Tremendous call by Dartmouth. Pat Crane gets the ball right off the direct snap. Doesn't even get to Will Kelly. Gets great blocking up front. He swings it to the outside. Look at the blocking, a parting of the Red Sea here. Pat Crane, you could have driven a Mack truck through this. And finally, he's pushed out of bounds by Donovan Monroe on the near side. Excellent running, excellent execution. Great play dialed up and called by head coach Rick White. Normally on a fake, you see the ball snap to the punter, and he would throw the ball or run it. This time it goes right to the up man. They get the first down. Here's Kelly on the inside handoff, spinning and turning. Knocked down by Jeff Profet, the linebacker, the sophomore for Brockton. But, wow, what a play that was. That was probably the best dialed up play, right? Fourth down and long. Called it at the right time. And like you said, it didn't go to Kelly. They went straight to Crane, and I think that was the key to it. And that was, and we know what a great athlete Pat Crane is. He's a strong runner, and I'll get to my point after this play. Well, here's Kelly. Gives it to Mark. Some hard yardage to the inside. You see, Tackled by Noah Moore. On fourth and long, that direct snap, you don't want to go into an Ethan Marks because he's up the middle, and that's where all the beef and the poundage was the odds were you wouldn't be too successful but a guy like Pat Crane he's an he's an east to west west to east runner so in that case the direct snap to him worked out perfectly because he grabbed it he bubbled right on to the near side and he got the first down that's how you execute and use the best resources that you have available by the talent that you have right now it's a third and three inside handoff marks basically stood up by the Brockton boxer defensive front, so they're kind of trying to establish some inside running here, but Brockton seems to be stepping up a little bit, and you saw Navon Reed in there from his defensive end position coming to the middle. Well, it's fourth and one. They're obviously going to go for it on the 29. They're not going to kick a 40-plus yard field goal here. They just don't have the leg for that, so they're going to go for it. Kelly not up at the line of scrimmage under center. He's back in the shotgun. Ethan Marks hits a wall, I don't know. It looks like the Brockton sideline is celebrating and they have stopped turnover. the Indians. They stopped. And hey, look, I can't say I disagreed with the call. I like the call. You want to give it to your guy who has so much success up the middle and Ethan Marks. And Marks was just stonewalled, period, end of story. Great defensive front there by the boxers to stand up there man Marks was right there and he ran right into a wall and you see the wall being led by Naziah Armour the defensive lineman the defensive end on the edge there as well as number 73 Jose Depina, the other defensive lineman he was more on the inside at the nose tackle position that's just a good old-fashioned defensive stand got to give the boxers credit Difficult to stop Brockton's offense two possessions in a row, but that's what the Indians are going to have to do. But here's a big run on first down. A gain of almost 15 yards by Jamal jones Rays as he went up the middle and a gain of about 15. And they couldn't bring him down. He was springboarding off all multiple Indian tackles, ping-ponging one after the other, and we're going to get a timeout here with the Indians. But one 
two, three, four, five, finally dragged down. It took three Indians to do it, and leading that charge was Landon Soares, but an excellent run on first down, and the ball is already almost at midfield. Well, at the beginning of the game, I was down on the field talking to both coaches, and I was looking back and forth, and Brockton may not be quite as big as they usually are, but they are big, and they are strong, and I hate to say it, but it almost feels like the Indians are starting to get worn down just a little, and that is not a good sign. No, I believe that's a fair assessment. This is a very deep Brockton team, and you've got players that can play both sides of the ball. They know the rules. They know what to do. They know how to compete at a very high level. This is a Division I powerhouse. They have been for decades under both Columbos, and when you represent a municipality with over 100,000 people, you're obviously always going to have a very eclectic, large, and diverse talent pool to dip into, and and that's evidenced again here this year with the boxers. Uh, very athletic, very strong, and it all starts with the coaching. Coach Colombo knows what he's doing. He's a Super Bowl winner, and he knows how to compete at the highest level here in high school athletics. And the boxers right now are really starting to show how good they are, how disciplined they are on both sides of the ball, and as evidenced by the scoreboard. The Indians need to stop them on two successive possessions. And it's a fake handoff by Medley. Medley has 10. He has 20. He's still going. Down to the enemy 30-yard line. A gain of 25 yards. And a real great job on the play fake by the senior quarterback. Again, had the defensive line fooled. Had us faked out up here. Nice. Look at that. Looking for Jones. Nope. I'll take it myself. I get the blocking up front. And this was just a Mack truck by the offensive line pushing everybody down. Huge gain of 20-plus yards. And the boxers are cruising. First and 10, Brockton at the Dartmouth High School 28-yard line. Huge possession here for the Brockton Boxers as Brockton leads 14-7. Handoff, that was not the cleanest handoff in the world. Nice run that time by Jason Winodi, the wide receiver who is also performing as a running back, and he gets a decent gain. Winodi had the ball and it kind of slipped off the wickets there for a minute, but he was able to pivot quickly and get the first down. So he turned a potential disaster into a 10 yard gain for another boxer first down. Ball now the 28 yard line. In the backfield there is Jamal Jones Rays along with the quarterback Medley. Rays gets the ball up the middle he goes, past the 10. Down to the five-yard line goes Jamal jones Rays, and wow, that offensive line, that beef up front by Brockton, they are bringing it. And that was a gain of 14 yards right up the middle, and right now the front seven for the Indians, they just can't get a stop. They just can't penetrate. They can't get to Medley. They can't get the running backs in that first or second level to be stopped. Now these running backs are getting to the third level before they finally get stopped, and the Indians do not have an answer for it, and to give credit to Coach Colombo and, and the quarterback Medley, they're exploiting the weakness of their opponent. That's what you do. That's how you win. And the Indians right now are in dire straits. They need to come up with something here or else this game's going to get out of reach. First and goal at the four. Here is Medley. Gets the handoff. Second effort. Is he in? He's in for a touchdown. Oh, a nice run that time by Jamal Jones Rays, and it's the second and third effort that got the Brockton Boxer runner into the end zone. Jones Rays, we saw it uh, multiple times on this drive. It takes more than one hit to get this young man down. One, two, three, four again. Finally on the fourth drag down by Pat Crane. It's not before it's too little too late. Six more on the board. And now this is a big point after here for the boxers. This could make it a full two score game. High snap. Here's the kick and it is going to be blocked. The Indians had two players coming up. You see them there getting up. Looks like Will Kelly is one of them. So a great job there by Dharma's special teams, and it's going to have to be a 20-7 lead that Brockton settles for here. And that could be huge. And that's a silver lining in this last drive here for Dartmouth. It's something to build off of. Hey, look, we had a tough time defensively, but 
Here's the situation. We breached the offensive line. We just blocked that last point after touchdown. So now it's not a full two-score game. Let's get behind our quarterback. Let's pony up here. Let's get at least six on the board. And then we're back in this ball game. Plenty of time left. 14 minutes plus combined between this quarter and the fourth. But the Indians need to put something together here and now. It's going to be a combination of good running up the middle. Then you're going to do some nice options that we've seen in the past with Kelly and Cumberland and Estelin going to the outside and then try to find that one-on-one -on -one coverage whether it's Pat Crane or Dutra try to get the Brockton boxers to commit try to find some seam routes you got to keep the boxers on their toes you got to keep them guessing you got to get them to not be able to figure out your patterns if they can do that in this drive they'll be okay we know they have the athletes to do it Zachary Santos kicking off from his own 40-yard line Really didn't get a lot on that one. It goes out of bounds at the 28. It was actually caught on the fly there by one of the Brockton coaches. And the ball should be brought up to the 40-yard line as a result. Unless it did hit inside the field to play and did touch. I don't believe it did. Looked like the coach caught it on the fly. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's going to come all the way up. They're going to re-kick it instead. Okay, it'll be a re-kick, so it'll be five yards back. And we'll take a look there. Did not bounce. Went right out of bounds. So hopefully the Indians can turn this into a little bit better field position. Ball will be kicked off at the 35-yard line now by Zachary Santos. 20-7, to the Brockton Boxers lead. Turnover, a couple of mistakes have been a difference in the game. Now it's an NFL-length kickoff. Dharma scored on their first drive and it's they haven't scored one. since. It's a good kickoff. Ball collected at the 20. Carried to about the 34. That's about a 14-yard return. And delivering a huge hit that time was Mitchell Gardner. Yeah, Gardner was Johnny on the spot there. He was all over the receiver. Smacked him down at the 35-yard line. The ball will be placed at the near hash. Well, like I said before the kickoff, you got to mix it up here offensively. You got to be eclectic. We saw a little too much of Will Kelly going back, just trying to loft it up. I'm not sure what we were trying to see there, but you got to have a nice combination of up the middle, outside screens, man in motion, options, and one on one on the outside. Dartmouth showing four wideouts, and it's Estrelin getting the handoff. Estrelin. Strung out pretty good, goes out of bounds after a gain maybe of one or so, and a nice job there by the Brockton defense. Jeffrey Profet was one of the players there that forced him out of bounds. Well, I like the call. Uh, that's what I was just talking about. You want some men in motion. You want to mix it up. You want to try to have some of these screens. You want to create some type of havoc on the outside. But Brockton just snuffed it out. It was only a yard gain. I thought that Estelin had some daylight ahead of him, but... Boy, these linebackers are so quick and athletic. Coach White talked about that it was a big play kind of game and that Brockton is a big play kind of team. Right now it's it's really a ground and pound as the Indians have tried to come back to that inside run. And as you said, you know, it's been successful at times, but look at those guys up front there, 76 and 73. I mean, those guys are huge. And that's Jose DePina and Amor up there for Brockton. Look how big those guys are. And now it's third and eight. It's very obvious that the Indians have to throw the ball here. They're not going to run the ball. They're down by two scores. They need to put up something. Third down and eight. Kelly under siege. Gets away. Dumps it off. Incomplete. Down there was Patrick Crane, but it went past him. Then it went deeper into the secondary, but the boxer defense has held. He had Crane open, but you got to give credit to Navon Reed, who not only is an excellent receiving tight end and a blocker, he's also a heck of a defensive end, and he chased down Will, and he forced Will to make an errant pass, and he tried to hook up with Crane, but dumped it right in front of him. A huge offensive letdown there for the Indians. Dharmit scored one minute and 14 seconds into the game and has not scored since. As Brockton has had 20 unanswered points, and as we get deeper into the game, the Indians aren't going to have that many possessions. 
Here's Kelly. Line drive kick. They're going to let it go. That's a good one. Goes right past Malachi Johnson, and what a great punt by the Indians. They bury him. Out of bounds inside the 10. And the official is going to put his foot down at the 8-yard line. That's where it's going to be. The Indians have a chance here because the boxers are pinned back. Try to create some havoc. Try to create a turnover. You know, I'm not a big fan of taking a lot of uncalculated risks and because you could get caught up field. But look, you're already down by two scores. We're already in the latter portion of the third quarter. Try a few blitz packages here. Try some outside maneuvering. Try to get someone engaged, whether it's Jared Holmes. Try to get Josh Miller involved. Pat Crane on the outside edge. Try to create a turnover, try to foster a turnover, or at least create some type of situation where you make the boxers feel uncomfortable. Mm. How huge would a turnover be inside their own 10-yard line? But now is the chance for Dartmouth to seriously make a stand here and show that they're not going to be run roughshod here and have this game get out of reach. How would you love to see the Indians get in there and strip the ball away? You always try to go for a strip anyway, but I think right now, like you said, you really got to try to make a big play. And here is the handoff. Second effort. Big carry that time by the Brockton boxers, Jamal jones Rays, who's been getting a lot more touches here in the second half. And look at that. Turns it into a first down on the first carry. They can't stop Jamal Jones' race. They had that problem in the last drive and it culminated with the score. They can't stop him here either. What a spin move on that first tackle. Wow. One, two, three, four, five times he was whacked. He finally gets brought down on the sixth. The Indians need something and they need it soon. Here's a good play as... Getting tackled behind the line of scrimmage was the quarterback, Medley. And they'll pull him back up. And let's see, that was a good play that time by, looks like, was that number 18, Chow? That was. William Chow making the tackle that time. And not only that, if you're Brockton here, there's no need for the hurry up. There's no need for the no huddle. Huddle up, wind that play clock down, and just burn some time, baby. Every time you see Brockton in a second and long, like they are right now, or a third and long, you think, oh, if they could just get the ball right now. Because if they can get the ball at midfield, you have time. You have the whole fourth quarter. Well, they do, but if Brockton scores here, Dartmouth's going to be in big trouble. Medley hands it off. Second effort, spinning and getting close to the first down, and he may have it once again. This is Noah Alowu. Barrels his way down. Did he get the first down? No, I think he's going to be about a half yard to a yard shy. Oh, oh no, they're going to move. Wow. Yeah, first What a down. spot. What a generous spot for the boxers, and Pete Colombo is going to take it. But nonetheless, the Indians cannot stop these running backs, whether it's Peoples-Jones or now Alohu. How about the play of Noah Moore, Nazaya Armu, Makai Boston, Jose DePina up front there? Yeah. They are really wearing down the Dartmouth defense without question. And you see, like I said, Pete Colombo and company, there are no rush. You've got Medley going to the sideline, getting the call, then getting back to the huddle. There are no rush here. First down and 10 now, Brockton. They are at the Brockton Boxer 31-yard line with 47 seconds left on the half. Here's Medley inside, handoff, spinning away and getting a good gain of about nine is Malachi Excuse me, Noah Olohu. Olohu. And with the way they're running this drive, they may not even take another snap here in this quarter. Yes, exactly. Why well, well, you'd think they wouldn't. Well, they're going to. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, the way they've been huddling up, and now they're going to go no huddle. So that throws that theory out. The, well, maybe they'll let the clock go down here. Who knows? 15 seconds left in the third quarter. Second down and two. Quarterback Devontae Medley. Taking yeah. his time, and it does not look like they're going to call another play. I think that's the right decision. We're saying, why would they want to do that? At the end of the third quarter, it's Brockton 20 and Dartmouth 7, and we're down to the final 11 minutes. Well, that was the right thing to do. Uh, you don't want to force anything foolish there. Let the clock wind down um, and really start to take a deep breath here. Take your water break. Take your two minutes off here and try to reset. If you're Rick White, you got to tell your guys, look, this is a great opportunity we have ahead of us here. We're only down by two scores. If we want to have an opportunity 
to get into the postseason and compete and win possibly the Southeast Conference title in this fall sports to COVID-19 shortened season. Uh, we can't take any plays off. Can't be any, uh, you know, uh, gimme games here or games where, well, you know what, we just showed up and maybe we didn't bring our best, but we'll get them next week. There's no we'll get them next week. Every game is as vital as the other. There are only five regular season games this year on this 2021 campaign. You got to compete as if this were the Super Bowl. This essentially is your Super Bowl. If you want to get into the postseason and compete in the SEC championship game or even host the SEC championship game or a playoff game for that matter, you got to win today. Um, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It only gets harder from here as well. Uh, the Dartmouth schedule, uh, three games on the road. So this essentially could be their last home game of the season unless there is a postseason game. That's why you saw the senior cheerleaders and senior players here uh, get recognized uh, at midfield during the pregame ceremony with their parents. So you got to let it all out on the line here, folks. This is it. Time to white knuckle it and leave it all out. If you lose, if you end up losing by three or four scores, you'll lose by three or four scores. But take some chances. Try to create some messing here for Brockton and compete at the highest level. You have 11 minutes to go, only a two-score game. Second down and two here for Medley. And it's going to be a first down as twisting and turning into the secondary as Jamal Jones raise again, move the chains as Brockton has another first down. And it's unfortunate because, you know, after that special teams play, Dartmouth had Brockton pinned inside the 10-yard line, and they had him at second and 10 at one point. And unfortunately, they just weren't able to hold him there. Brockton was able to come through with the first down when they needed it. They can't stop the running backs, especially Joan Race can't stop him. Here's Medley. He's got a lot of time this time. He's directing traffic back there. Now he throws back the other way. And he has a completion to Michael Curry right here in the middle of the field. Down to about the 44-yard line, and that's another first down. And Michael Curry was completely unchecked. There was nobody near him in the middle of the field. That is an easy 10-plus yard com completion into Dartmouth territory. First down and 10 now, Brockton at the Dartmouth 43-yard line as Brockton is just grinding it out here now. And they are taking advantage of their lead and running the ball and taking time off the clock and really frustrating the Indians because... Obviously, Dartmouth needs the ball back to get two scores. Here's the handoff. Plenty of room up the middle. And once again goes Noah Alowu down the middle, spins away, gets a gain of in excess of 10 yards, and yet another first down for Brockton. And you got to give credit to this offensive line. That's a gain of 13 yards right there, Alowu. I and mean, you don't even see any green jerseys anywhere near the ball. Seriously, not till it gets to that third layer in the defensive backfield. The uh, defensive line and the linebackers are just being completely neutralized here in the second half. Indians playing this home game this week as they did last week against New Bedford. Then as Ian said on the road, they got to play Bridgewater Rainham. They got to play Durfee who almost defeated this Brockton team. So Durfee right. is much improved. The top two teams play in the championship game. And as we understand it, the top seed hosts so it would have been nice to see the Indians host, but as long as they can get into that game, inside handoff this time and going down quickly that time was Jamal Jones Ray. So the Indians closed up the inside and probably looking for the run king on the run right now. They know what Brockton's going to do, but they got to stop it. And they've already milked two minutes off this game clock too. At this rate, the Dartmouth Indians, whether even Brockton scores or not, they're going to get the ball probably at around the five minute mark. Not a good situation for the Indians. 8.53 and counting, and got to credit Brockton. As we said, Dartmouth scoring on their first possession. Four plays right down the field in the end zone. 7 nothing lead, 1.14 into the game, and they haven't scored since. Difficult job on the exchange, but Medley still gets away. Gets to the 25-yard line. The extracurricular activities picking up. That was unfortunate there from the Dartmouth point of view because there was some difficulty on the exchange, but they still managed to pick up a game. They did, and Willie Chow, number 18, had him in the backfield. He actually had him down by the legs, and he just couldn't get enough strength to pull down Medley, and we know what a great quarterback Medley is, and he's so darn strong, and wow, Devontae certainly doing it all with the legs, the feet, 
the arm, making the in-game adjustments, the audibles, the checkdowns when he needs to. Like, for example, when we saw that checkdown to Mike Curry, he saw nothing, dumped it off to Mike, who was wide open at the midfield stripe, and he was able to penetrate the ball and whack it into Dartmouth territory. It's now third and five. Clearly four down territory, too, so you're going to have to stop Brockton twice here. Stopping them once is difficult enough. That's Rodrigo Lima. He's close to the first down, but he's short, so it's going to be a big, huge fourth and one here for Brockton. Got to bring the house now if you're Dartmouth. No games. You got to have your outside linebackers to set the edges to create any type of stoppage if there's a play action or if there's a uh, any type of option play. You got to have your other front. Well, in that case, if you have two outside linebackers on the outside, you got to have your other front five right in the middle. Bring in your safeties, too. Bring them in. So what does Brockton do? Do they let him come and then dump off that screen pass? We'll see what they draw up here on the fourth and one. Here's the inside handoff. Spinning, spinning again. Oh, Kelly's trying to bring him down. But he could not do it. Finally, he's got some help there by the Indians. And wow, that's too bad. Both he and Quigley Mello tried to strip the ball out. But you got to give credit. What running by Alohu, the spinning, the gashing, and he finally slams it down. And a gain of over a seven yards, and it's a first down at the 15. Could be the last hope there for the Indians yeah. on that play. And, and we knew what was going to happen. We knew on fourth and inches they were going to run the ball, and Dartmouth just couldn't bring enough heat. It's as simple as that. And, you know, and again, you can say Dartmouth didn't bring enough heat, which that's speculative, I suppose, but... Um, you got to give credit to that Brockton offensive line. They're so darn good. Brockton with a fresh set of downs here late in the game. And look at this, second effort, third effort. Is he in the end zone? We're waiting for the call. He's going to be short at about the one-yard line. Rodrigo Lima, another terrific running back for Brockton, reaching out but just came up short of getting into the end zone, but does it really matter? He tried to break the plane, but... Tried to do like Ethan Marks did last <laughs> just week. Just like Marks, but he was down before then. Look at this hurry up. They're going to try to get into the end zone. Here we go. There's Lima, and he, he is into it. the end zone standing up. Rodrigo Lima from about the one-yard line, and it is a big lead now for Brockton at 26-7. to Yeah, unfortunately now this may be a lead that uh, is too insurmountable for the Indians to overcome, but wow, that was quite a statement drive by Brockton, and We'll take a look at that touchdown scamper as soon as we get the shot of this point after. When Odie is the holder and kicking the extra point will be Zachary Santos. He is a senior looking to make it 28-7 to if he's successful. High snap. Is he able to get it off? He just does get it over the line and through for the extra point. Good recovery. <laughs> Good recovery. And let's take a look at that. Last touchdown by Lima. And nothing cutesy-wootsy here, Paul. The handoff up the middle. Boom. Right in the middle. And leading the way on that block, you saw it, was Noah Moore. We've mentioned his name several times today. The left tackle on the... Weak side, leading the way, leading the charge, and Lima's able to punch it in. And now, at this point for the Indians, it's about respect. It's about competing. It's about not giving up. So even though this lead is probably too much to overcome, you still want to compete on the offensive side. You still want to try to have a nice drive. Don't want to rush anything. You're not going to win the game at this point, but mm -hmm. you know what? Don't rush it. Run your set. Try to get in six, seven, or maybe even eight points. Mm -hmm. Try to end this afternoon. End your last offensive drive in all likelihood on a positive note. Something you can build going into Bridgewater Raynham next week. A lot of times you look at other games, and I think I was fooled by that a little bit. I was looking at some of the footage from Durfee and Brockton last week as the ball is collected at the 15 by Ethan Marks down to about the 31, 16-yard return. Good return there by Marks. But nothing against Durfee, but when you see the Durfee Hilltop is a much improved team, take Brockton to a 28-21 game. First thing I thought of was, wow, the Indians yeah. are usually, usually much better than Durfee. Sure, yeah. And, in fact, Laurie Lowe sustained at times thought Dartmouth was going to win by a point, and it's understandable after what we saw last week. But it's really too bad because you don't get that many cracks out of Brockton. Good thing you didn't go to Vegas with Laurie's prediction today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm not really a gambler. You know, I, uh, 
Uh, you know why? It's because I always lose. <laughs> so that's, it makes it easy. You know? I'm Listen, either going to lose or I'm not going to lose. You know what, Paul, for the record, I don't. I never win either. I, I swear to God, I've, I've, I don't think I've won more than $5 in a scratch ticket in my life. And at the casino, forget it. <laughs> well, the odds are stacked against you anyway. <laughs> There's an inside run that time. You know, real quick, not to get off the subject, that was Esterlin with the carry. But, you know, when I go to the casino now, I just stand next to my wife. Because she, she's the good luck charm. Yeah, she can win. I never win anything, so I yeah. stand there and she, she can hit. You know, like but, but me, <laughs> it, it's like taking money, putting in a shredder. <laughs> <laughs> well, those, the, those dealers see you coming. So, yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah, me too. Trust me. Two hit me's and uh, and it's over. Two hit me's, yeah. Second down and ten for the Indians. Five minutes to play, and the Indians, as Ian said, just trying to play for some respect, and the pitch off to Esterlin. Estelin turns it into some high speed. Knocked down by Malachi Johnson as a pretty good gain turned in that time by Estelin. Yeah, it looked to be about a gain of seven by the naked eye. It'll be third and short, third and a couple. Either third and three or third and two. I want to point to one particular play, but that interception back at the very end of the first half by Malik Miranda, they really stopped the... Indians from getting into the end zone, and then Brockton came down and scored really a two-score swing. That Malik Miranda interception at the end of the second quarter, that was the backbreaker that proved to be too much to overcome. Here comes Kelly, a junior quarterback at 5'9", and he is past the 40, down to about the 43. That's going to be enough for a first down, taken down by Gershon Safrant, the linebacker for Brockton. Well, and that's what Will does best. He's an excellent athlete. He can scamper, got some good blocking, and he was able to move the chains. Unfortunately, that's a story we haven't repeated too much here this afternoon is an Indian first down. They've had a rough go of it. They had a heck of a first drive where they punched in six points plus, and they got the seven on the point after. And then, of course, they've had some other shines of light here and there, but all in all, it's been a tough afternoon. There's the handoff. That's a nice gain. And taking a pretty good hit, too, was that runner, Esterlin, as he got banged up by Darren Castor. Yeah, Castor came right in, the linebacker, and punched him right down to the turf. Just but to not show before you, a gain of four. I was going to say, just to show you how fast time goes by, right? I was talking to my son, who actually coached the 10 year old baseball all star team. And Will Kelly was on it at 10 years old. So That's Dylan crazy. said to me, well, was he a freshman? I'm like, no, he's a junior. <laughs> so what year was that? I was like, seven years ago you coached that team? I That's couldn't believe crazy. it. I thought it was like three or four years ago. Jeez. Yeah, the athletes in Dartmouth, you know, they they, uh, they, they are noticed. They grow the up. The time goes by fast. Here's Kelly. Oh, I think there was contact way before the intended receiver was there. There are no flags on the play. Yeah, they let him play, but you probably could have called an offensive pass interference on Ethan Marks. He pushed very off. blatantly pushed off on yeah. Jershon Safran. He pushed him right down, but the officials are going to let him play here the game. This is what they say in French, a fait accompli at this point. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. So Yeah, what's the point of calling that yeah. penalty at this point? Just slow the game down. 27 to 7. It really turned into a Brockton route, but not until we got deep into the third quarter and then early in the fourth that it got kind of closed down. Hand off that time. I believe that might have been Esterlin. Esterlin. He took a big hit. They're obviously going to go forward here at this point. What does it matter? It's fourth and five. Um, I would assume they're going to throw the ball. Well, maybe they're going to punt, actually. Will Kelly is getting lined up way back in the offensive backfield. They're not going to go for it. That's very surprising. Unless they're going to try some trickery here. Well, they tried it before. It was successful, and they came at a great point in the game, and it felt like the Indians were going to take the momentum back the other way, but you got to credit that Brockton defense that kept the Indians out of the end zone. Here's Kelly kicking from his 39. Caught. Falling forward is... Looks like Cameron Montero, so it's going to be first and 10 now for Brockton. 2.17 left in the football game. I hope to see some other players coming into the offensive strategies now for Coach Colombo. This game is over. I'd like to see some underclassmen get some vital playing time. Um, we'll see what is called, and we'll see who's out there as far as personnel goes. We might be getting into the second or third deep chart here for the Brockton boxers. 
But again, we talked about it several times. It was that interception at the end of the second quarter that really broke the back of these Indians here this afternoon. They were driving. They had a chance to really uh, assert themselves here heading into halftime. And Will Kelly was rolling out looking for Pat Crane. They just couldn't hook up, and the rest is history. Kelly with that touchdown run, six yards, about one minute, 14 seconds into the game that gave the Indians the 7 0 lead. It was the 31 yard touchdown pass that went to Reed from quarterback Medley. Well, that's a highlight reel one. Then it was an interception by Malik Miranda that we keep talking about. Not only did Dartmouth not score there, but then there was a 15 yard touchdown pass from Medley to Alahu. And then the Jones Ray six down, uh, six yard run, and the Lemur one yard run, and now the Indians are looking at a loss, and we're having one of those water timeouts. Uh, we just did, yeah. You and I didn't have any water, but they did. What about that Madeira <laughs> wine break? No, we're well, saving that for that's later. That's for later. You yeah, and me <laughs> later. You, I remember just one three years ago, Paul, when I was on the feast executive board. You tapped the first barrel with us. Yeah, was that three years ago already? Yeah, can you believe oh, it? Oh my God, 2018. Zach Barnes going forward for a gain of about five. That was, you know, combination to Bedford Guide and my Paul little Santos, Paul Santos yeah, thing yeah. going, right? But I do remember that. I do remember that I was looking at the at the feed, and I'm like, oh, I guess people really want to see that, that barrel open because it had a lot of looks. We call it the angels have arrived. That's yes. what we call it. And uh, the, the, the saying of the Madeira wine, it's the nectar of the gods. That's I hope that somehow we'll be able to get that feast off the ground this year. I know the committee is weighing it right now, right? Well, I was just talking to John Noons, my good friend from the club, and uh, he's on the executive board. We can get to that in a minute. Second down and four. Here is the inside handoff. Boy, Brockton is not quitting. First down, Brockton on the inside handoff, and that was Zach Barnes. That was Barnes. But, um, but yeah, so we're going to wait and see what happens with the feast uh, this year. Of course, the governor, as of a, uh, March 22nd, said 150 people can be gathered for an outdoor private gathering. Well, 150 people, I mean, come on. I mean, the feast brings in, on one given night, 10,000 people. So we have to figure out a safe way to do it. Uh, uh, I'm not on the executive board of the Feast this year. We alternate every couple of years, but I am a club member. I'm in on those discussions. We'll see what happens. First and foremost, we have to keep the public safe. Right. Um, so do you do checkpoints? Do you do pre-sale tickets? Do you have to sanitize people and take their temperature before they come in? It's all up for discussion. Brockton in victory formation, and Medley will take a knee. Medley takes a knee. Well, it's interesting, too, because... The governor, Governor Baker, he's a big fan of the feast, and he always comes down. Comes every year. Yeah, and, you know, we get a chance to talk to him and so forth, and he loves the Madeira wine and the whole thing with the number one fishing port and the fishing fleet and the great Portuguese population and Cape Verdean population and population of all different folks here in the New Bedford and South Coast area, which, which makes the area special. So hopefully it'll happen. It's just a matter of wait and see. You're absolutely right. You have to wait and see because Medley takes – the final knee of the game, and that's going to be it. It's going to be Brockton 27 and the Indians 7. And, wow, you know, that score, I don't think that score really tells the story because the Indians were kind of right there. They just they just couldn't get in the end zone after that first score, and that was it. They were getting close, 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 and that interception again ended up being the final backbreaker as Pat Crane just couldn't come down with it as he, was, he had his route undercut from him in the end zone on that rollout by Will Kelly. You know, just uh, a gain of missed opportunities for the Indians, and we can we can dissect this any way you know we really want. But you know, when they had the ball inside the sixth, they had three chances before that interception by Kelly, and they didn't give the ball to Ethan Marks once. I would have liked to have seen him get the ball at least once. We know what a great downfield runner he is. Maybe he could have brought the ball into the end zone or at least to the one yard line, and options could have been more open at that point. Who knows? Hindsight is twenty twenty. Um, the Indians really put forth a good effort today. It just wasn't in, as indicative on the scoreboard as they would have liked. Um, now they got to regroup. They're one and one. Now it's time to go on the road for three straight games, and they're going to have to compete next Friday uh, evening against a very strong, very deep, very physical and talented Bridgewater Rainham Trojan squad. And um, Paul, if this is our last game of the year, I hope it's not, but uh, it's been a pleasure working with you, and hopefully we're back here again for the Southeast Conference Final. 
absolutely, the season is not over. They got Durfee and then they got Bridgewater Arena, which would be an upset. But you see Rick White there pumping up his team is still a possibility that the Indians can get another crack at Brockton. But, of course, the main thing, too, is they got the season off the ground. Yes. They have limited fans here in the stands. You had senior day. It looked like we weren't going to have a season at all. So credit to the athletic directors and the coaches for making sure that we at least had this limited season. And I saw, you probably saw it too, some of the spring sports may be able to play deep into the MIA playoffs, possibly even play for a state championship. They're not sure yet. And that'd be great because we know that the football, excuse me, the baseball and softball programs here are always very competitive and they have very talented players on both sides. But again, just to get a football season off this year was a fantastic effort by the MIAA, all the local athletic directors, and just to get these kids out there in their senior year, especially for the seniors, to get them engaged out there to celebrate uh, football and sport and camaraderie and sportsmanship. It was a great thing to see. Uh, again, the Indians fall to 1-1 one and one on the campaign. They're on the road for three straight weeks. Hopefully they can straighten it out for next week and get on a winning streak and who knows what happens? Uh, you know, Brockton can lose a game or two still because as far as I'm concerned, everything is up for grabs here in the SEC uh, league. Uh, we have all very um, uh, competitive teams. Well, there's a lot of parity amongst them. Well, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank our DC TV staff led by Mr. Peter Chase, Mike Fernandes, Dan Ferguson, Tyler Gillis, and for my partner, Ian Abreu. Great working with you, my friend. Final score again, it is Brockton 27 and Dartmouth 7. Have a great afternoon from Dartmouth Memorial Stadium.